السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد The occurs my brothers and sisters بارك الله فيكم that Ibn Tahir al-Maqdasi al-Hafidh رحمه الله تعالى that he said سمعت الإمام أبا إسماعيل عبد الله بن محمد الأمصاري بهرات he said that I heard the Imam Abu Ismail Abdullah bin Muhammad Al-Ansari in the city of Hirat, which is, as far as I'm aware right now, in the country of Afghanistan. Oh, Afghanistan, Iran area. As many of the muhaddithin of the Salaf of this Ummah and the great Aimma came from that region, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Persia, modern-day Iran, and from that region, many of them. Imam al-Bukhari, the likes of Imam Muslim, the likes of this Imam here, and many of the A'imma, and other places such as Al-Marwa, which is modern-day, as far as I'm aware, they call it now Marv, which is the place of many of the students, or some of the students of Imam Ahmed. Imam al-Marwazi, rahimahullah, and others. So he mentioned that I heard him. That he said, this Imam Abu Ismail al-Ansari, that he said, Uridtu ala sayf khamsa marratin. That I was put to the sword five times. They put the sword to me five times. La yuqali. And it was not said to me, Irji' and madhabik. And it was never said to me, leave your madhab. Leave what you're upon. They never said that to me. But still they put the sword to my neck five times. However, yuqali, lakin yuqali, that they, however they, it was said to me, uskut amman khalafak. Be quiet and shut up in that which you are differing with us in. Stop talking about us. So they put the sword to his neck, this great imam, five times. Not to leave the madhab of the salaf, not to leave the aqidah of the salafiyyah, not to leave the manhaj of salafi, not to leave the way of the sahaba. They didn't want this from him. They said, do what you want. That's up to you. But shut up when it comes to speaking against us. Don't speak against us. So they put the sword to his neck on five separate occasions, threatening him that we're going to kill you if you don't shut up. So he said, فَأَقُولْ لَا أَسْكُتْ So he said, I say to them, I will not remain quiet. This is the shuja'a, the bravery, and the courage of the salaf of this ummah. Swords put to their neck, imprisoned, tortured, and beaten. Still they would not leave the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were united and they were upon this way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And they feared not the blame of the blamers. And they were courageous in that regard. And we have the likes of those individuals in our time also. They had them in the time, every generation has them. Sheikh Muqbil was from them. Sheikh Rabi is from them. Sheikh Al-Albani is from them. These A'imma are from them, ya ikhwan. Before them. The likes of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, who died in prison eventually because of the aqidah, not because he rebelled against the ruler. He wasn't thrown into prison because he raised the sword against the ruler. Rather, he was put into prison because he would not leave Ahlul Bid'ah alone. He wouldn't leave them alone. He just would not leave them alone. So they put him in prison in Egypt. Then they put him in prison in Damascus. And eventually he died there. It was not the problem that they had with Ahmed. It's just the only problem they have with Ahmed is that Imam Ahmed would not remain silent. This was the problem. Just leave us alone. 
Even the mushrikeen in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu If the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu had kept his ibadah to himself and to his followers without criticizing the worship of other than Allah and those idols, they would have left him alone. Why do you attack our idols? Why do you speak ill of Al-Mannat and Al-Uzza? Why do you, and Allah, why do you speak ill of these? This was their problem. So these Salaf of this Ummah, they would not remain quiet. They wanted Shaykh Rabi'ah in this time to remain quiet, Ahlul Bid'ah against Sayyid Qutb. So they went to Shaykh bin Baz complaining. They went to Ibn Uthaymeen complaining. They went to Al-Albani complaining. They went to Muqbil bin Hadi complaining. They said, look, he's, a, he's speaking ill of the dead. Sayyid Qutb. Before that time, what was he known as? In the eyes of Ahlul Bid'ah and the, and the Mukhalifin, what did they used to call him? Shaheed. A Shaheed Sayyid Qutb, Mujahid. So Shaykh Rabi came and he took some of the speech of the likes of Mahmoud Shakir, Rahimahullah, from the A'imma of Egypt in the time of Sayyid Qutb. He knew that even the scholars in the time of Sayyid Qutb, some of them spoke. But for a long period of time, no one exposed the bid'ah of Sayyid Qutb that was corrupting and causing and cancer in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Shaykh Rabi stood. Muhammad Aman rahimahullah stood. Shaykh Ubaid stood. Muhammad bin Hadi who was, who was now, Shaykh Muhammad bin Hadi must have been in his 30s, stood for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not fearing the blame of the blamers. Who are you going to go to? Do you think by going to Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz that haq changes to batil? Do you think by going to Shaykh Al-Albani and complaining about Shaykh Rabi'ah that all of a sudden truth becomes falsehood? Haq is haq. Whether, you, whether someone is with you or someone is against you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave those a'imma tawfiq. So they supported Shaykh Rabi'ah. So much so that Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala he said that there are only two types of people who speak ill of Shaykh Rabi'ah and Shaykh Muqbil. Only two types of people. Either the ignorant one, either the jahil, in which case he is taught, or the, or the follower, sahibul hawa, the one who follows his, his desires. And if he follows his desires, then may Allah guide him or break his back. Kalam Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah, when they wanted to complain about the da'wah of Shaykh Rabi'ah and Shaykh Muqbil, so these Mujahideen remain till these times. Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi. When Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi wanted to refute Sayyid Qutb, someone who, who ascribed himself to knowledge wrote to Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi and spread a letter saying that Ahmed al Najmi should not write against Sayyid Qutb and against these people, these Ikhwan and these Mubtadi'a. So uh, Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya al Najmi from the Mashaykh of Sheikh Rabi'ah. It's from the Mashaykh of Sheikh Rabi'ah. Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi wrote a book just in this one issue, somewhere in the region of two to three hundred pages, hardback. He said, a reply to the one who says that I should not publish my book. Even in that regard, you're telling us not to refute Ahlul Bid'ah, we're going to tell you why Ahlul Bid'ah to be refuted and why this call of yours is upon Batil. Ahlul Sunnah, ya Ikhwan. They do not fear the blame of the blamers. So yes, some of the people are weak and they are not able to speak because their character is weak. But if the character is weak, then at least do not forbid others. And that's what Ibn Batta mentioned. And I mentioned it a few days ago. When Ibn Batta was asked, who is the Sunni? The Sunni is the one who does not become angry when Ahlul Bid'ah are being refuted. So we have these types of Mujahideen in every era. And they are those who stick together to the rope of Allah. And they hold on to the book of Allah. And they do not separate and they do not divide. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيَعَ That those who split up their religion and they became factions. They became sects. لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ That you, you, oh you Muhammad, you have nothing to do with them in the least. Imam al-Baghwi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, whom ahlul bid'ah 
wal ahwa those who split up the religion and they became factions they are ahlul bid'a abdullah ibn al mubarak rahimahullah who died in the year 181 after the hijra that he mentioned this characteristic of ahlul sunnah he mentioned ahlul haqqi laysa fihim ikhtilaf that the people of haqq that there is not to be found within them any different ahlul haqq they do not differ aqida wahida manhaj wahid deen wahid nabiyuna wahid our messenger is one our deen is one our manhaj is one our aqida is one our ulama are one we share our ulama we do not separate between them hate a group and praise a group we love them as long as they are upon the haq and they are upon salafiya and they are upon the truth and the one who speaks against him then that person is the zindiq as it was mentioned to imam ahmed ibn hanbal when he was sitting in the gathering in baghdad so some of the people came to imam ahmed and they said to him so and so and they named his name that he speaks and he curses ahlul hadith the scholars of hadith meaning the scholars he curses them so imam ahmed he started standing up and he started shaking the dust of his thobe of his thobe he started shaking the dust off saying zindiq 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 and he continued to say it up until he entered his home those who speak against the scholars are not speaking against the scholar because he is an arab or because he is from the tribe of madakhila or because he is albanian as sheikh al albani was or because he is from the wadi as sheikh muqbil was not because of that ya ikhwan they speak ill of these scholars because of the deen that they are carrying they did not speak ill of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he was qurayshi or hashimi They did not speak ill of him because he was an Arab. They did not speak ill of him because he was too short or too tall or too wide or too thin. Not because of these reasons. The only reason that they speak against these ulama are because it is because of the manhaj and the deen that they carry. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they protect. So distinguish my brothers and sisters. When they speak against your Salafi brothers and these individuals they speak against the tulab al-ilm or even the small students of knowledge. What is the reason what is the sabab of the jarh what is the sabab what is the reason of the disparagement is it because he comes from india or afghanistan or bangladesh or pakistan or maghrib or morocco or egypt or algeria or sudan or somalia if he speaks ill of him because of that then he is a racist he is a racist if he speaks ill of him because he's too high or too short or too wide or too fat or too thin then he's stupid ghabi you judge a person based upon how tall short he is that you don't look into the character of a person then he's ghabi you are in no need of his of his company or he is speaking ill of him because of his deen if he is speaking ill of him because of his deen then look to see what he is saying if he is from ahlul bid'a then we don't listen to him why because muhammad ibn sirin rahimahullah ta'ala what did he say that before the fitna began we never used to ask the people We never used to ask the people about the narrations. But when the fitna began, meaning of the khawarij, when the fitna began, then we used to say to the people, name us your men. If they were from Ahlus Sunnah, then we accepted from them. And if they were from Ahlul Bid'a, then we rejected it. So that's the criteria. The one who's bringing the proof, the one who's talking to you. So-called proof. or the one who is trying to make this tahdhir and this warning is he from ahlus sunnah or is he from ahlul bid'a ahlus shubahat ahlul hawa hisbi with the hisbis walks with them talks with them mixes with them prays with them relaxes with them eats with them drinks with them keeps company with them and then he makes an attack against our brother abu hakim as a mithal or our brother hasan al somali or our brother abu iyad Oh our brother Abu Idris so one of the other brothers that he starts attacking him then if he is a person of bid'a then we wash our hands and we close our ears from the beginning we don't listen to them if he is from the people of sunnah then we take him by his hand and we say this juma Abu Hakim will be present let me take you by your hand 
and make you sit in front of Abu Hakim, repeat what you said to me in front of him if you are a man. Because what did Muhammad ibn Sirin say? Name us your men. So if you are men, then come and sit and name us your men. Yawm al Jum'ah, Abu Khadija will be there. Bring him, take him by his hand, say what you said to me, say to him. What do you say about Shaykh Rabia? If you claim you are from Ahlu Sunnah, go to the house of Shaykh Rabia and advise him. If you are upon the haqq, Shaykh Rabia is the first one to accept your nasiha. So this type of behavior, ya ikhwan, don't see it as, oh, these are just personalities. No. If it is personality, what personality? Did you take your wife? What did you do? Steal your car? Rob your home? What did he do? What is the personality conflict? What is it that he did? Did he swear at your family? Did he abuse you? What did he do? That now you have to come to me and speak ill of him. And you have to go to Fulan and Fulan and speak ill of him. But yet you do not go to him. If they are Ahlul Bid'ah, then we don't listen from the get-go. We put our fingers in our ears. Or we walk away. And there is uh, some lines of poetry from one of the Salaf. He said that the fox, he said, you know the fox? The fox, he said, I know more than a hundred tricks to outwit the dog. More than a hundred tricks to outwit the dog. But nothing is better than that I do not see him and he does not see me. Nothing better than that. So even though we know how to deal with them, and if they come, then you've seen we can deal with them. And tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nothing is better than these, that these things that we have by way of tawfiq that Allah gives to the one who is aqil. And the one who is upon the sunnah. There is nothing better than that we do not see them and they do not see us. But we call the people in general to the da'wah and to the duros and to ilm. Because we are united because from the signs of Ahlul Sunnah is that Ahlul Sunnah that do not have in their ranks that they, do not have in the, uh, that they do not have in their ranks any tafarruq, any different. This is what we should have in this masjid. In fact, in all of the masajid of Ahlul Sunnah, there should be no two Salafis, one talking behind another one's back, having secret meetings or plotting and planning. How are we going to deal with the khatib this week? Oh, subhanallah, what he said last week. Oh, he's too mutashaddid. Oh, he speaks against the people. Oh, he's... These are the rumors that cause dissension in the hearts of the Salafis. The man is alive, he's living, he breathes. He has ears that can hear. He has a mind that functions, so go and advise him. Why are you advising everybody else around him? And you miss the person. This is the ghiba. And this is the backbiting that is forbidden. This is the thing that causes iftiraq and bloodshed amongst the people of Sunnah. Munafiqeen, or those who behave like munafiqeen, even though they may not be munafiqeen with the nifaq al-akbar, but they have some of the sifat of the munafiqeen, that they infiltrate the ranks of Ahlul Sunnah, causing discord and hatred in our ranks. Look at the sins of Fulan. What do the sins of Fulan have to do with you? If his sins are open and apparent, then that's a different issue. If his or her sins are hidden, then who are you to bring them out? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered them, who are you to bring them out? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the one who wishes to expose the sins of his brother, then Allah will expose him even if he is in the depths of his own home. Allah will take you out the belly of your house and expose you in front of the people. Why? Because you try to expose others. Those whom Allah covered, there is not one of us that is free from sin, ya ikhwan. Not one of us. And we start pointing fingers at everybody else. Look at your own self. Cover the sin. If his sin is open and apparent, it's a different issue. Because now this one has made his sin apparent. You don't even have to say anything if the whole dunya can see him. So now, ya ikhwan, be careful with regard to these affairs. Causing discord. And you know the worst type of discord? Is the discord that is made between those who are the teachers and those who are listening to the da'wah. The ulama, and then the general folk. Making that separation is worse. It is better that you have, like Sheikh al used to say, how many doctors do you have in Algeria? 
doctors of medicine. They said, what, 100,000, 200,000, whatever it was. They said, subhanAllah, how many ulama? They said, none. Why is the ummah more in need of ya ikhwan? Doctors of the abdan, of the bodies, or doctors of the soul, who can correct the person's inside and his heart and his soul. The ummah is more in need of ulama. Then secondly, thereafter, what about those who carry the message of the ulama? They sit in the masajid, and they sit in the marakis, and they travel up and down the country or even around the world, not speaking from their desires, but speaking with the words of Ahlul Ilm, reading the books of the scholars. Every lecture, every dars that they give, Fawzan said, Bin Baz said, Al Albani said, Ahmed bin Hanbal said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, Rabi bin Hadi said, Fulan said, Muqbil said, every dars, they want to disconnect you from those people who talk. Because now when the disconnect is made, then there is nothing connecting you to the revelation. Who said that? Not me. Fawzan. When that happens, there is nothing connecting you to the wahi. Who connects you to the revelation? The teachers. The teachers who read the works of the scholars. Ideally, the scholars themselves, if you live in a land where they are ulama, like in, like in Saudi, or in Kuwait, or in Egypt, they are ulama. But in a land where there's no ulama, who is the one who's connecting you to the revelation? Those tullab who sit in the masajid and the marakis of Salafiyyah, reading the works of the scholars, giving you the latest information with regard to fulan and fulan, with regard to this benefit and that benefit. You disconnect the people from them. Now how do they connect to the Messenger of Allah? Because these are the students who have studied with those scholars, who have studied with their scholars, who have studied with their scholars, generation after generation. Like when I said to Sheikh, the scholar, Sheikh Hassan bin Abdul Wahab al-Banna. When he was sitting in my house, I said to him, Ya Sheikh, did you take knowledge from Sheikh Ahmed Shakir, Allama, Muhaddith, Imam? He said, did I take knowledge from him? He said, he's related to me. My mother was his, I can't remember what he said, niece or cousin. And he said, of course I took knowledge from him. He said, where did they take knowledge from? He said, from their ulama. Many of them were connected to the grandchildren of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah. So who is the one now? That alim comes and he teaches. Or well, those who study with him, they teach. Eventually when you take that, that chain, that silsila back, where does it end up? With the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now we disconnect. Who do we want to connect the people to? Who do they want us to connect to? Maududi. Qutub. So I'm going to sit down and read you the books of Maududi or Qutub. Or even worse than them, they open up the books of al aqidatul wasiti of Ibn Taymiyyah and they give the sharh from their aql. Or they open up Usul sunnah of Ahmed ibn Hanbal and they give the sharh from their aql based upon the manhaj of Sayyid Qutub. I've seen it happen. Amazing, ya ikhwan. That you can open up Barbahari, read it, and then oppose the positions in it as you're explaining it. This is the way of Ahlul Bid'a. And that's why we finish on this point, that statement. Av Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, by Allah, that the, that the Mufawwida, Ahlul Tafweed, that they are more harmful to Ahlul Sunnah than the Jahmiyyah. More harmful. Those who make tafweed, ya ikhwan, are individuals who say, the Jahmiyyah, what do they do? Deny the names and attributes completely. And eventually, that they, that they call at the end is that there is no God. This is the Jahmiyyah. The, 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 the people of tafweed, Ahlul Tafweed, they affirm for Allah His names and His attributes. They affirm them. So they are closer to Ahlul Sunnah as far as that is concerned. But then they say the name carry no meaning. We make tafweed. That we relegate the meaning and we delegate the meaning back to Allah. We don't know what sam means, what basar means, what seeing means, what hearing means. We don't know. Why are they more harmful to us, ya ikhwan? Because they resemble us closely. 
those who resemble you closely are more harmful to you because the jahmi will not take your deen the christian will not take your deen the jew will not take your deen inshallah they will not take your religion but ahlu tafweed the one who makes tafweed with regard to the attributes of allah he comes to you and says yeah i'm like you i affirm the names of allah the attributes of allah what's your problem so now the salafi gets confused and gets deceived by them so these individuals are the same we are not deceived inshallah by the rafida no by the brailwiya no by the naqshbandiya no by the quburiyin and the rest of them and all of them the shia and the brailwiya and naqshbandi all of them are quburiyin in essence we are not deceived by them because we know our tawhid to that basic level but now a person comes who speaks and he reads to you al aqidatul wasitiyah but at the same time he defends the innovators yusuf al qardawi or sayyid qutb he says to you what's wrong with you i'm teaching you wasitiyah but you are defending qardawi mubtadi'a you are more harmful to me because if you say that i'm teaching wasitiyah i may even end up in your dars because a braille we i'm not going to end up in his dars but wasitiyah might end up in your dars therefore it is not enough ya ikhwan that we just say about a person oh he teaches wasitiyah where's where's the da'wah which is mufassal manhaj ahl sunnah is a manhaj that is a manhaj of tafsil we want to know who are your scholars name us your men name them before we sit with you and take knowledge from you name us if he says rabi al madkhali he mentions muhammad bin hadi ubaid al jabri zaid al madkhali ali nasr al faqihi fawzan luhaydan bin baz ibn thaymin muqbil al albani alhamdulillah you have passed the first test which one of them now recommends you which of them knows you or do you know someone who knows them that we can go to about you this ilm this knowledge is deen so look to who you take your deen which of them know you or look at the tricksters the hisbis who your scholars bin baz al albani ibn thaymin no problem they did name the scholars he says yeah i don't want to enter into this who the scholars are what's this imtihan say zakallahu khairan my hands are washed i'm going home that's enough your answer is enough soon as you utter those words i don't want to have a debate with you now that kalima and that jumla itself is enough for me now to say go away i will not take knowledge from you what do you mean al albani bin baz ibn thaymin bas so the hanafi says abu hanifa malik and shafi'i you going to take knowledge from him they're dead who are your ulama now who is the jamaa who do you name now today this is their behavior but you look like the fundraising leaflet of green lane mosque we are with the ulama al albani bin baz whatever leave out all of those others that i've mentioned they say we don't have to name them but when they produce their fundraising leaflet who do they have on there ajil and nishmi or ajil and nishmi the mufti of ikhwan al muslimin in kuwait his photograph and his fatwa for them who else umar al ashqar ikhwani jordanian from ikhwan al muflisin on the on the brochure but when he comes to sheikh rabi why do we have to mention sheikh rabi why did you have to mention ikhwan al muflisin sheikh rabi you're finding it too hard to swallow because when you swallow that name it chokes you but when you swallow the names of ahlul bid'a the mufti or one of the muftis of ikhwan al muflisin in kuwait you swallow it like nothing like water you are drinking it that doesn't harm you when you mention qardawi he is a scholar sheikh yusuf al qardawi is a scholar may allah forgive him and forgive us may allah guide him and these kind of words you find them saying but sheikh rabi if they mention the name they start choking they start choking upon that name why because he is a mahna to them in this time 
Just like Ahmed was a mahna. Just like Ibn Taymiyyah was. Does that mean Ibn Taymiyyah was the only alim in his time? No. Ahmed was the only alim in his time? No. Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, only one? No, there were others. But those who had hatred for this da'wah of tamiz, then they have hatred for these types of scholars. So be careful, ya ikhwan, and stick to the haqq, and do not be deceived. And be upright and be steadfast upon this. Don't start walking like that, and don't be like that dead leaf in autumn. Wind blows, you go from one street to another. Right street is enough for you if you live in Birmingham. Barakallahu feekum. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.